Hey, this is Dr. Stan again, and we're talking about new beginnings. You know, if, you've, uh, if you're working with folks or you're a brand new, kind of a fairly new believer in Christ, there's certain foundational principles that are really important for you to grab a hold of, and many of which are doctrinal, if you will, or teaching focused, some of which are really more practical. And one of the most practical areas, we'll talk, you know, there's prayer, but is praise and worship. You know, I, I love to sing. I was a part of a singing group when I was in high school and early college. Prior to that, I was part of a local church that we primarily sung hymns, and hymns are good. You know, hymns are very good. I mean, yeah, they kind of give you a full doctrinal picture as you sing the hymn. We don't do that very often nowadays, but I really think we need to do it more. But also there's choruses, there's songs, there's hymns, there's spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart is the goal, but praise and worship is a big part of who we are and what we need to be about as Christians. You know, I mean, we, we praise a God who's there. I mean, we say thanks. We say, you are worthy. You are blessed. I, I'm so honored, Lord, that you, you gave your life for me. You know, that's part of our praise. Part of our worship is to, is to bow and to, not bow and scrape, but to bow because God is great. He's good. He's kind. He's powerful. Uh, he's holy. God is all of those things and a bag of chips, and we need to remember that on a regular basis. I believe with all of my heart that, uh, you know, I mean, praise and worship is a part of what should flow out of us. Okay. So how do you be begin with that? Well, I like what it says in Psalm 100.4. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. Now, of course, the psalmist is writing about the, the temple, uh, which was uh, ultimately destroyed in 70 AD in Jerusalem. So we're not going to the temple. So how does he mean? Enter his gates, enter his courts. Well, Jesus is the door, Jesus is the gate. So in his name, we, we just, we, we present ourselves, we position our hearts, you know, before him and we, we give him thanks. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You know, these words are, you know, you'll find it in the book, talk about them a little bit, what they are and, and some of the expressions. I mean, you know, I, I, I was raised in a church that, that when you were given praise, it meant you were standing sometimes and sitting most of the time, and you didn't really make any demonstrative move because somehow that was dishonoring of God. Later, I came into a real, you know, much more demonstrative, shall we say, kind of church environment where they would clap their hands and shout and dance and did several other strange things, but anyway... You know, there's all kinds of expressions that are talked about within Scripture, such as lifting your hands and speaking and singing and shouting and clapping and dancing, using musical instruments, even being silent before the Lord. Anyway, whatever we do in word or deed, we're to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Colossians 3.17 Praise and worship is an important part I, you know, not just of a corporate worship service. I know some churches, I mean, it's like, it's never going to be more than three songs and you're done. And others, they, seems like they go on and on forever. Everybody, every culture is a little bit different that way. The key thing is to recognize that corporately we are together giving thanks for all that God has done. We're worshiping our King who deserves to be praised and honored and glorified. All of those words are sometimes difficult for new Christians because you don't know what they all mean. Well, it's, it's a good thing to look them up. That's why you need a concordance. You need to probably learn how to study the word. Maybe you could pick up our course on fresh manna. That would help you. But the key thing is you, you want to praise, you want to worship. But you, you know, it's really important to learn to do that personally and even privately. To wake up in the morning instead of starting the day with, good Lord, it's morning. Maybe start with, good morning, Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. The word rejoice even is a, is a word used to praise and give glory to God. I will rejoice. That means I'm going to say, Lord, thanks for the day. Thank you for your love, your grace, your kindness. You might even break into a song. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
and bring, let praise flow from your heart. Let worship flow from your heart. Because really, our God deserves to be praised. He's your creator. He's the sustainer of life. He sent his son to die on the cross. He's given his, us his Holy Spirit to live within us. He's ever present with us. We're a part of the, the great and wonderful family of God. We have a wonderful father that loves us and is transforming us by his power. And the more that we give him thanks, the more that we praise, the more we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, not only do we have praise and worship, but we also, of course, have prayer. You know, prayer follows, but sometimes it begins our time of worship. Prayer really is a form of communication. Everybody prays, especially people in trouble. Anyway, when you're in traffic, God help me or you want to get out of a situation, you might cry out to God. But, you know, our prayer is much more, uh, we're aware of who we're praying to, and we're usually more aware of what we're praying about. A prayer may start with, again, thanksgiving, but, but it, it goes on from there. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, we find the prayer. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and him who knocks it will be opened. Asking, seeking, knocking, learning to listen when God replies. So we're supposed to pray. I mean, the Bible clearly talks about that. And your, your book goes through different types of prayer. You know, I probably the, the, the pattern prayer, and it's really not the, you know, we call it the Our Father, some would call it the Lord's Prayer, was really the prayer that, was, that Jesus gave to his disciples. It was more of a, of a pattern prayer. And you could, well, I mean, you could spend hours and days just on that prayer, our Father. And I love that because it's not my Father, my Daddy, it's all about me. You, you're looking at me, you don't care about anybody else. No, no, it's our Father. It's, it's corporate, it's family. And he's our Father. He, he's a, he's our, our Daddy, our Abba. He cares about us. He's in heaven, but where is heaven? Well, that's another discussion, but heaven is the realm of God, wherever he is. I mean, he is there, and we're, you know, isn't it nice to know that in Christ we're seated with him in the heavenlies, our fathers in heaven. Holy is your name. Your name has been set aside and lifted up above every other name. In fact, it's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue confess. So we, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing, our Father in heaven holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's kind of an interesting perspective because in heaven, everything's all right. Nobody's upset. Life is good. Life is eternal. It's here that we need heaven. And that's what he, Jesus said we're supposed to pray. Pray that his kingdom would come in its fullness. It's already here. It's in his church. It's in us. The kingdom lives within us. But the beauty is we can pray. And when we pray, we're actually, essentially, all we're doing is saying, Lord, we agree with you. And we're saying back to you what you've already told us to say to you. And we kind of get this process rolling together of seeing his kingdom manifested in the earth. Where, again, every knee will bow and every tongue confess where the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. And we, of course, rule and reign with him. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is the bread of life. We have his daily bread in, in the word of God. And of course, we have the physical needs that we have as individuals and families, and we can trust that God is a good provider because he's a good, good God. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, you know, who have debts against us. And the forgiveness is a big part of the life that we have to live, along with our daily repentance and all. Don't lead us in temp te into temptation. In fact, lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake and deliver us from the evil one, which he has and he does every day as we submit ourselves to him. Look, prayer is important. There's, there's hindrances to prayer. There's there's issues. Some people have a hard time, especially with, you know, public prayer. I remember, you know, as a kid, we had what I thought were professional prayers. <laughs> you know, they would start praying, especially in the King James Version. Oh, God of the mountain, oh, high and mighty one. Thou, you know, and I don't know who they were trying to impress. 
you know, I think God just, he understands the heart and, and he, he loves to talk to us. He loves to listen to us. He, he wants us to come to him boldly like a child, Hebrews 4, and say to him, Lord, I'm here and I know you're here and I love you and he loves us and Lord, how can I serve you? And God wants to bless us and it's a relationship. And how we improve and strengthen our relationship, one part of that is how we deepen each day our time with the Lord in prayer.